What's up, you too? Did you wait up at Trey come and give us tonight? I know it was a crazy, crazy, crazy week. Um, we definitely have we have a lot of things you know happening this week. Uh, I bring this to a reference that it was like we had like the entire you know seasons of the market in one week. You know, we have a bullish, we have a bullish day, like very bullish day. You know, we rally. Uh, we have a very bearish days. You know, we pretty much crash, we flush down, and we had consolidation days, right? Why, why am I bringing this up to, to you guys? You know, definitely, uh, it's something that you guys need to learn, and I want to touch base this throughout the video. And you know, I'm gonna give you some tips that definitely is gonna allow you to, you know, see better perspective for the market and actually your trading. Right, because in order to be successful at this, in order to be, uh, you know, better and profitable on trading, you guys need to understand all these, you know, kind of scenarios that you guys are gonna meet on the future. You know, it's not this is this is gonna happen again. And then, like I said, you guys need to be prepared to deal with this. Right, you have to guys to be able to deal with this the right way. Right, otherwise, that's gonna lead you guys to lose money. Right. And then that's really not my purpose. You know, my purpose is at least, you know, help you guys to make some money, you know, help you guys to be, uh, you know, better traders for yourselves. Right. So the only thing, the only thing that I can really do is, you know, you guide you guys through your journey. Right. So we're going to, we're going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to touch base on different, you know, stocks like, you know, they pretty much perform the same, you know, Spy, Tesla, in NVIDIA, that a lot of people is talking about NVIDIA, you know, and a few of our swings that, you know, just touching base where they are and what might expect next week. All right, guys. So let's make it back at it. And well, that's the first thing that you guys love to always talk about and you know, check back at it. SPY, you know, SPY. Uh today it was pretty much the market was flat. I mean, kind of dead, honestly. You know, it was not really much that you could have done, right? Even for scalps, you know, what a lot of people that you know consider yourself scalper. You need to understand that when you're scalping, uh, you are just pretty much basing your trade on, you know, three, four minutes, you know, even two, three, minutes, four, five minutes, you know, trade. You can be longer than that, right? Because when you face days like this, uh, you can't overstay on your positions because if you do, you're gonna, you're gonna have your premiums gonna get burned, right? Or you can get caught on a bounce. You get, you can get caught on a rejection, and that's how you're gonna lose money, right? So even though I I personally consider that even in, in days like this, uh, scalping is pretty uh, what we call you know risk reward you know risk reward ratio, you know the RR, is it was pretty low today. You know the hassle, you know the effort, you know the entries, the exits, all that. Even for a person you know that's very experienced, you know it's it's just it was not worth it. You know even myself I I I pretty much didn't touch by today because. It just didn't work for my time. You know, there was no necessary. I mean, remember, you don't have to trade every day, right? When you see days like this, simply just move on. You know, do something else. You know, go work yourself out. You know, go to the gym. You know, go walk. Go something else. You know, enjoy your day, right? Remember, that day is that the market doesn't present opportunities, and that's fine, right? So, again, today, you know, the only thing that we could, we could have caught, probably, it could have been the double top in the morning. You know, coming up for pre-market, we definitely had that, uh, we can say a double top form based on the rejection of our uh, 393 resistance. It was a 393.80, and then it break out down, right? So that was pretty much from 393 all the way to 389, right? But the, besides that, I mean, if you notice this, this happened the first, you know, 30 minutes uh, during the market, you know, 40, 45 minutes, right? A lot of times I avoid to trade in on this range of the day because like I say it's very volatile. You know, sometimes you can you can get caught on the on, on the wrong side of the trade and you lose money, right? Now there are the gambles, people that like like to gamble. I mean, it it it's that's why it's a gamble. You know, you can lose and you can win, right? But you know, I I, I didn't even trade this because I consider like it was pretty I myself like to you know find a good setup. That you know really, you know, worth take my time, you know, worth take my money, put my money in there, you know, a good amount of money that I can, you know, profit, you know, consistently, and then, you know, stay out green, right? So I, I didn't didn't it, I didn't even touch this, right? Even based on what we can see, you know, the it, it, it had the double top formation, 
it broke down, you know, it closed below the 20 May and then, you know, dropped down, right? Uh, but besides that, after that, you guys can notice that the entire day, like from almost like 10.45 all the way to even after, after hours, the whole day was on a single range, right? It didn't break out, none of us. It stayed between 388 and 391, right? I mean, if you are able to identify those ranges, you know, like the social support is levels, you can kind of play those levels, right? Like, you know, from, if you are assistant, you know, buy some puts, you know, write it down and vice versa, you can look at the calls. But again, even though uh, doing this, it's very risky, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, recommendable, you know, I wouldn't, if you're a beginner, then definitely you don't do this because you're going to get burned, right? So it is, this is a lot of things that the market really told you guys, taught us how it can have a lot of uh, types of market on, you know, when, in, in days, in days. I mean, in just one week, like I said, we had, we have a bullish market, we have a bear market, and then we have a flat market, right? And it's kind of, it makes sense since we already have, you know, a lot of economic data coming out this week. You know, we have CPI, we have PPI. We have jobs report, you know, we have, uh, I believe, industrials on, on, on Friday. Then we have the banks collapse. You know, we have all these things going on in the market that it really kind of shake the market in a way that the market didn't know what to do. You know, the market didn't know what to do. If it's going to go up, if it's going to go down, if it's going to stay flat, right? So it, it's all about that. You know, now we come to the weekend. We really don't know what's going to happen, right? There's a lot of rumors, you know, there's a lot of rumors that there are not I believe 186 banks and risk of you know collapsing, and that's gonna be that can be a catastrophe, right? That's that's what we call the domino effect. So one one falls and then you know start bringing all the rest with them. But we don't know yet. We don't have that confirmed yet, right? It's just a rumor. But if we actually that's true, then you know the market is gonna get into another pretty hard week. You know we have F FOMC next week, I believe on Tuesday. I'm not sure. I have to check that my my uh, my uh, my uh, my calendar. But I believe we have Powell next week, and I'm sure that they will ask him what's going on, right? There's something, you know, this with the banks, it, it just definitely might affect him, not, not him, but, you know, might affect his decision about, you know, the, the rate hikes, all this kind of thing. So I'm um, still very, I'm honestly expecting another volatile week, especially with Powell next week, right? So we'll see. Like I said, if you look on a bigger perspective, we haven't done anything pretty much, you know? We pretty much just did the entire week in the same kind of range, you know, from 35 to you know, 395. Only we break out. We broke out one day out of out of five days, you know, from, from the week. We only pretty much broke out one and then we get back those gains on the next day. So, technically, we ended the week where we started, right? So, nothing happened. Right, but again, you have to kind of understand more or less what can what, what can come. If we look at the daily, we definitely can see that we're still, you know, kind of resolved. You know, the MACD lines are, you know, getting close, but you know, this isn't really, you know, giving a direction. We can see sellers are, you know, kind of, you know, reducing size, right? Because you know the market was kind of bullish the last couple of days, but that doesn't really indicate anything, right? So it's kind of hard to really predict what might happen this week. So we're gonna wait, you know, Saturday and then Sunday evening and then yeah, again I'm gonna update you guys on Sunday night to prepare you guys for the week for the next week. Right. But other than that, like I said, my, my point is that uh definitely days like this, it's okay to stay out of line. You know, it's just it's okay to not trade. Like focus on somewhere else, you know. It, yeah, it is true. There is always a bull market some somewhere on the market. And right? you can find and I believe today I think it was I don't know, I'm not sure if it was Microsoft, but one of them that was pretty strong, right? So you could just find a trade and take it right not necessarily not just marry spy you know spy it's good you know a lot of people like liquid you know because it's better liquid and, right but it, it, you don't need to trade only one stock all your life right there are many things that you can focus and many things that you can actually you know make money out of it right tesla if you can notice the same thing it's follow pretty much the pattern of the day you know if you just first stay on the first uh, 30 minutes uh 45 minutes and he broke down that was pretty much the only opportunity that you guys could have got. And then out of that, the entire day consolidated between the same level, you know, between this 177.33 support and then we had this uh 179.9 resistance. That's what is the entire day, right? So 
the same idea. You know, you, you could have play the level, you know, bounds, projections, but you know, I still believe that the role, the reward was pretty low for like I said, the hassle, the work, right? But it's it's just my my own uh vision, my own personal again opinion. You know, everybody can have different uh ideas, trading styles. So I respect that, right? But I'm just, you know, giving you my perspective on, you know, more uh if you want to really win to be successful at it, like I said, you need to understand that you want to trade A plus setups, right? And this is not a this is not a good setup, right? This is just to make just to just this is just to make try to make quick money. And like I said, if you come to the market with that idea, then you ain't making that, right? This is not a, this is not to all I'm gonna get rich in in one hour. I'm gonna get rich in a week in a month, right? It doesn't work like this. This is a, this you this is an entire career. You guys need to put some work into to learn, you know, pick the best trades, right? And the best trades are on the best, like I said, quality setups, not just a random day that is just consolidating and you're trying to find a direction, right? So you guys have that. Now Nvidia, Nvidia, like I said, it, it was it was very bullish, you know, it, it was it was nonstop. But again, I think Nvidia, we can say it was mission accomplished. It did fill those gaps that it had previously on the daily, as you can see. And now it just makes sense that it needs to cool down, right? Which it did. Today it kind of, you know, stopped the rally and then it pulled back a little bit. But still, we are above, overall, we're still above bullish. You know, we're still above our support line, which is 253. Uh, notice the daily how, we, even though we pull back, we still have a lot of buyers incremented size on, on NVIDIA. MACD is scrolling up. So, you know, we're ready because... This might be, you know, like I said, I'm not sure what power is going to say next week, but if he comes out saying, oh, no, don't, there's nothing to worry about, you know, it, we have a, all under control. You, you never know, you know, the market can rally. And if it does, then, you know, we have, we're going to have a lot more, you know, action and, you know, fun to the upside, right? So, again, I will update you guys with pretty more accurate levels on Sunday, depending on what's going to happen. And more or less, I can have an idea of what we can expect next week, right? Then for our swings, you know, BLBX, uh, I've been talking about this for, for, for days. Like I said, nothing's going to go down forever. You know, we were in a strong downtrend because the market, again, was, was flushing down. And penny stocks tend to react harder than, you know, big caps. But we definitely get to the point that I noticed that we were consolidating. If you notice, you look at your four hour chart, you can see we were bouncing for this 170 area, 80 area, we were just consolidating there. And today we broke out the downtrend, right? Which is actually pretty good. You know, it, 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 it just tells you that there are buyers stepping up, which we can see that on the daily, you know? Now the sellers are starting to introduce in size, MACD wants to start curling up. So this is where you start, You this is where you want to start either averaging down, right? Because this is giving you signs that now the buyers are stepping in for the next spot, right? Or you're going to start a position now. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be averaging down right here. I'm going to be adding to my position and then see where we go next week, right? And we have GNS. Again, this has a catalyst on April 28th. I'm going to be accumulating until then. So we have almost over a month for you guys to accumulate this. Plenty of time to lot in your position, right? For me, like I said, this is this is I'm um, I'm not long on this, but I believe from what I'm doing on the catalyst, uh, it's in a pretty good spot, you know. So 248, 235 actually on you know, after hours. We had a very nice retracement for four dollars, right? We have a small gap here to fill probably. Uh, again, sellers are just not that not that strong anymore. We are getting pretty much at the same level we break out before, right? So you gotta think about it. We did that before. $20 to almost, you know, $4, $5, we can make that again, right? Again, the swings is just patience, and I know it might be a little hard, but it is what it is. And like I said, if you have a plan and you got to follow it, have conviction at it, and, you know, it, it might work, possibly. Sometimes it might not work, and then, you know, like that's when we, you know, I gotta, we got to accept the loss. But I believe that this has, you know, pretty good potential, especially with the next catalyst. So, you know, why not take a chance? If you look at the weekly, man, you know, we've been getting beaten down. We haven't had really a green week, you know, pre in a lot of times. So I believe we're due to that, you know, we're very due to that. So we'll see what we bring next week. And 
and I will check it out. Right, ONCS, I'm gonna be adding to this as well, since we are we already have another um decent pullback, right? Look at the weekly. If you look at the weekly, we are forming similar, if possibly a double bottom, right? It's very oversold on the weekly chart. Might be still pointing up, even though we have kind of like a pullback from from you know the latest spike. This looks it looks pretty it is looking pretty strong, right? Again, you have to always look the bigger perspective from where you aim. I believe, like I said, the ONCS has a lot of to give. Um, we're pulling back, that's fine. I believe that we might touch two dollars, maybe not, but this is gonna be the area to start loading up, right? We can possibly see new highs, you know. We can possibly, you know, maybe next week breakouts breaking up, go over three thirty four, then go over four five dollars, you know, who knows? Maybe six dollars, right? It's all about patience, right? So let's see what's, what comes next week. Uh, I will be averaging down on this. So let's see what, what we do next week, right? CLNN as well. Uh, nothing, not, nothing much, you know, I'm just, I'm just keeping adding to this. So there's not, not much that to talk. And honestly, you know, if you review the earnings, they're pretty decent. So I'm pretty bullish on this. It just might have time to pop. So uh, the one that I'm actually looking to next week that I like, it's the CAN. I have AKN, right, for two reasons. You know, number one, we can see how on the daily, uh, we are cooling up on the daily, uh, where we had pretty nice strong push today on after hours. And I like that. You know, we that showed us that this did actually perform a reverse split, right? And you can see how we bounced from the 20 minute and then now we're starting up trending. Right? I believe this has pretty good room. We can even go higher, like $2, $3. We're at 139 right now. So I believe we have pretty decent room to go. So just you know, add it to the watch list. I already have a small position today, which is a 1.30. And I'm right. Right. Other than that, if it pulls back, then you know hit the dips. Obviously, always if you like I said for this, try to get your stop loss uh, on point. Uh, because we can see the lowest that I've is being is the, you know the, the lowest I haven't touched it lowest is 1.03 so I will probably set my stop loss at one dollar maybe 95 cents to give me space and range to you know average it down if I really need to you know for it as a 60 main 20 main that's fine but I believe that we have pretty good you know reverse reward here so I'm gonna be adding to this one remember a k a n I can this is going to be another swing that I want to be adding next week. All right, guys. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a you know a nice week, even though I know it was a hard one. But I know some of you did your thing, and then you can make some money. So I'm proud of that. If you guys make money with my guidance, and again, please share it. You know that what you guys do, how you guys make money, is what motivates me to become even better for myself. You know, improve to myself for you guys, right? So yeah, I mean, like I said, if you guys have any doubts, questions, just don't doubt to reach out to me. I'm always active, you know, try to help you guys when I can. Uh, you know, just don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. You know, leave some comments if you want to. I'll be just reading you guys. And yeah, I mean, I'll see you guys on Sunday, okay? So have a nice weekend and, you know, just enjoy some time with the family, guys. Bye. Take care, guys. What's up, guys? This is Wapa Trader coming out yesterday. If you guys want to start making some money and achieving those goals, that's not the freedom you guys are looking for. They need to start investing in yourself. They need to start investing in knowledge. All right, so join me to the Alpha community. I'll be there with you guys, guiding yourself to the market. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on the market because I'm going to get you guys get some money. All right, so see you guys.